100 days in Jurassic Park. We have three objectives. First is to craft full star steel armor and weapons. Second, eliminate Anu, the genetically modified human. Finally, defeat the raging scientist. He is rumored to be one of the most dangerous people in the world, genetically modifying animals, turning them into dinosaurs. In conclusion, we have one life, three objectives, and 100 days to survive. Can we survive? Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> All right, cadets. This is a top secret mission. We're dispatching both of you to Black Site 747. Sergeant Ace and Lieutenant Rasher went missing in action three months ago. Your missions are to rescue Ace and Rasher and investigate the rumors of the raging scientist. Best of luck, cadets. Godspeed. Wow, it's a beautiful day outside. The sun is out and the sky is blue. You can't ask for anything better than this. 10-4, looks like we're gonna have clear skies for the rest of the day. I'm losing control, what's going on? Mayday, mayday, I repeat, mayday, mayday, we are going down. Oh, what happened? Dispatch to Forrest, do you read, over. No feedback from Forrest, we're gonna take it from here. In the middle of day one, we found a forest that got completely mauled by the lava. We started by gathering a bunch of wood to make our tools. After getting our tools, we heard a noise. It seemed like someone was shooting at us from the forest. While traveling around, we found a village. The couple of apples we found last night didn't really cut it. Anyways, we got some carrots and some wheat and some more beetroots. We killed a mushroom for the food and we took some bookshelves. Within the blacksmith, we found two diamonds, nearly a full set of iron, and made ourselves a diamond sword. After a few more days of traveling, we had finally found a spot to build our base. We decided to build a treehouse, that way none of the dinosaurs could reach us. We extended a ladder all the way down, leading to our first chest room, and on the second floor we haven't decided what to put in here. And of course we made a lookout tower, and we saw some red blocks in the distance. Could somebody else have possibly been here? We found a cave nearby, and for the next seven days, we spent mining away. We got some sulfur ore, we got iron, coal, and even some diamonds. After looting the cave, we made a strip mine, finding some more diamonds. After we finished mining, our pick was pretty much broken, and we ran into an Allosaurus. Good thing it was sleeping, because these do a lot of damage. Once we made it back home, in the morning, we created our diamond helmet and leggings. We spent the next couple of days gathering enough bones to tame a wolf. This is going to be used to help defend me and my base from any unwanted dinosaurs. Comment down below, what should we name our wolf? I went out to gather some more wood, and I ran into some mammoths. One instantly charged through the tree at me, so I stepped away from him, and very close next to them, there was a pack of Stagiosauruses. I had never fought one before, and I hit it, and it did three hearts of damage, so I backed off. Then I tried to fight a mammoth and it nearly one-shotted me, so I went back to base. Crafted up some spruce fences and started working on a full barrier around our base. Good thing we put up these walls because there seemed to be a pack of mammoths that moved in. And over the next couple of days, we started working on a farm, and as you guys can see, it actually came out fairly nicely. We got wheat, we got carrots, and even beetroots. We came back down to the mine that we were at earlier, and we had to make a nether portal. We had to find a nether fortress to get blaze rods. After searching around the nether for a little while, we found a nether fortress with two blaze spawners. Can someone comment down below? Is that like really rare? Because I feel like I haven't seen that before. Anyways, we started farming blazes and they actually do quite a lot of damage, so we gotta make sure we don't die here. While it's on our way back from the nether, the mad scientist pulled up, throwing a poison and an instant damage, killing my wolf. He then proceeds to ignite the TNT and swan dives off the house. He then runs straight for his helicopter. He is able to pull away just before I am able to get to him. Don't worry, I'm going to make this a promise to myself. This will not be the last time I see you, mad scientist. As you can see, the base has been completely destroyed. After traveling for a few days and murdering some pigs, we have finally built our base. We decided to build our base into a mountain this time, and most of it is not out of wood, so there's no way he can burn down our house, that's for sure. So we went with something simple, we got our little entranceway here, and you walk in, we got a bed in the corner, and we have a nice little lookout spot. 
From days 42 to 45, we went out exploring, and in the distance, we saw some sort of white figure. After I got closer, I realized this was Rashner in Ace's plane. We checked out the back rooms to see if there was any signs of Rashner and Ace. They've got to be around here somewhere. We went to the cockpit of the plane, and all we found was dead leaves and cobwebs. This must have been here for a while. After searching around the entire plane, we went to the back and we found ourselves a little secret room. There was some glowstone and a chest. I thought it was some sort of trap, so we were kind of sketched about it, but we opened the chest and found ourselves a star seal chest plate and axe. This provided me with speed three and jump boost four for a limited time. It took us two days to return home and we tried making this jump with jump boost and actually almost dying. Wouldn't have that been a weird way to end the video? Anyways, for the next couple of days, we started working on our brewing area. We got brewing stands, collected sand and nether war, and then created a bunch of potions like strength, speed, and instant health. The reason why we brewed all these potions was because we were looking for the Anu boss, and after traveling for three days in the nether, we didn't quite find the Anu boss, but we killed that ghast and we found some sort of weird structure. As I broke inside, a bunch of honey fell out. Could this be some sort of beehive? We decided to break in through the top, and a swarm of bees came at me, so I panicked and jumped off and almost died. After traveling for seven more days, in the distance we see a figure. As we get a little bit closer, it is indeed Anu's ship. This is the ship that is going to get us to his headquarters. The outer layer of the ship was laced with redstone, so I went ahead and broke that just in case of a trap. Behind the staircase, we found five golden apples and a scarab gem. The scarab gem is going to be used to spawn in the Anu boss. Also, we started looking through the other chests and started finding these figurines. We needed to collect four of these. Luckily, they were all found inside of this boat. For this ritual, you need four redstone and four figurines, which causes the statue to levitate and explode, creating a portal. One like equals one prayer. Here we go. We have finally found a news mansion. This is where he stays. After we pop our speed and strength, we charge into the headquarters, aggroing a lot of Anu's body yards. We gathered a fairly big group of them and then brought them outside, killing them one by one. Luckily, we had our speed potions, otherwise we probably wouldn't be able to outrun them. I found gathering them in a group is the most effective way to get through them pretty quickly. They can also teleport behind you like an enderman. Inside of this chest, we found ourselves some diamond boots, which is actually going to really help us. When we walked in this room, I realized that there was an enchantment table in the center, so we killed these guards, grabbed the lapis, and enchanted. Anyways, it is time to fight the Anu boss. As you can see, the coffin slowly opens, and it is time. We both immediately jump off the platform, and each time he hits me, lightning comes striking down, lighting me on fire. As you can see, he does a lot of damage, which is why I'm popping golden apples. And as we're fighting, he grows wings and flies. He then sends fireballs at me. We then push Anu all the way into the corner, putting him in a very bad position, allowing us to do quite a bit of damage here. Not only can he grow wings, not only can he cast fireballs, but now he spawns in mobs. He spawned in zombie pigments with armor, some blazes, and now he's running away. He ran through the hallway spawning multiple guards on me and boxed himself in full obsidian. Now he had to kill all of these guards. We dragged like all 10 of them to the middle and took them down. We then worked our way into the obsidian box where Annie was hiding. We then blocked ourselves in the same quarters as him, and I don't know if this is the best idea. He has unlimited fireballs, but at the end of the day, we were able to take him down. As the news body was on the ground, we right-clicked it, teleporting us to his lair. We also had an ancient key in our inventory, allowing us to unlock this chest. This chest ended up giving us an ancient clock. Not too sure what this is used for, but it's pretty cool. We spent the next few days traveling back to our base and we found a sign stating, Hello Survivor, if you're reading this, meet up here, and he provided us coordinates. So we gathered our essential supplies that we think we'd need and we saw some crazy dinosaur. Yeah, we're not gonna fight that. Painful, is that you? Over? Wait a minute. 10-4, glad to see you're still alive, Forrest. I ended up losing control and crash landed. Did you land safely? No, my engine cut off too. I wonder if there was some sort of energy barrier that cut off our power. I'm not sure, but this plane must be where Rasher and Ace crash landed. I hope they're both still alive. Wait, what is that noise? It's the mad scientist! Follow him, quick! So, once again, Forrest and I were reunited, and we were chasing down the mad scientist. We went in the same direction as him for days, and we finally found his lair. 
We started walking down this creepy cave, and at the end of the hallway, we found some weird looking thing on a fence. This cave seemed to be going all the way down to nearly bedrock. Anyways, we killed this skeleton, and we found the room with Rasher and Ace. Now we just gotta get them out of here. I wasn't sure where the mad scientist was, but we were not gonna stop now. I started by getting Rasher out, and Forrest got Ace out. We sent them out first, and then we went to follow. Watch out, it's a trap! Forrest is right, we're now trapped in this room with no sign of the mad scientist. Forrest and I turned around and somehow the dinosaurs were let out. I think the mad scientist did that somehow. Anyways, these were pretty weak, so we ended up killing those fairly easily. We proceeded to try to escape and we got poisoned. It was the mad scientist. We wasted no time. We immediately jumped onto him, getting a couple hits. I threw a health pot at Forrest to make sure he was full HP. He then threw some instant damage at us. How many freaking potions did this guy have? As the fight continued, I didn't care. I was not going to stop at anything till this guy was just destroyed. Let's not forget the mad scientist is the one that blew up my house and killed my pet wolf. And while we were fighting, I thought of a strategy. I mind opened the lava. The plan was to hit the mad scientist into the lava. I don't know what kind of staff this guy's using, but it does a lot of freaking damage. He got me all the way down to four hearts, causing me to use more golden apples and instant health. Force had a really good hit hitting him right in front of the lava, and just like that, we knocked him in. And the mad scientist was defeated. We found these weird looking blocks on the wall and when we mined them, there was a secret layer behind the wall. This must have been where the mad scientist did all of his studies. As you can see, there's a T-Rex head in the wall, he's got his brewing stations, and there's even computers here. This must have been where he genetically modified them. After checking out the lab, we went back to see if Rasher and Ace were still here, and there they are, in one piece. Thankfully, they were able to live. Forrest found another hole in the wall, which led to a massive tunnel. We didn't come this far to not see what's on the other side of this tunnel, so we began our journey. Seven days later, we made it to the other side of this tunnel. I thought this thing was never going to end. We were also all fairly low on food. Once arriving to the top of the ladder, we made it outside to a dark and rainy day, and we found his helicopter. We all hopped in the helicopter, and with everybody trusting their lives in my hands, we took off. The skies definitely weren't bright and blue like they were before, I'll tell you that. And a few days of flying later, we finally arrived at my residence. Force and I ended up hooking up Rasher and Ace with full iron armor. And we made sure to give them food as well. And on day 100, we departed from Jurassic Park and arrived back at our home here on the warship. If you made it this far in the video, make sure you guys watch Forrest's video. We each had different objectives, which made our videos so much different from each other. So go show him some love, watch his video, and thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.